we're going to prove the Brouwer fixed point theorem in dimension one that sounds fancy, but it's actually a concrete statement in calculus. And it states that a continuous function f from 0, 1 to 0, 1 has a fixed point c. So f of c is equal to c for some c inside the interval. And we're going to understand the intuition behind this, which is super beautiful, and then rigorously give a proof. And the theorem for higher dimensions is graduate level math. It's called algebraic topology, basically. So this is a glimpse into that. And I'll talk about that at the end. So watch till the end for that. But this is going to be very elementary calculus. OK, so let's dive into it. So what the proof is going to be is we're trying to find a number c in the interval 0, 1. So f of c is equal to c. And we're given our function is continuous. OK, so let's kind of draw a picture. Drawing a picture is always really helpful to get a feel for these things. So here we have a function from 0, 1 to 0, 1. OK, so I'm going to draw a little bit of a box here, which is a red box. And because the function is mapping 0, 1 into 0, 1, we know the graph of the function is always inside that box. OK, now we also have another function g of x is equal to x, the identity function. OK, so g of x is equal to x is the identity function. And we want to find a value c so that f of c is equal to g of c. Because after all, g of c is just c. OK, so why am I phrasing it this way? Well, we can actually graph g of c, is g of x, okay, which is identity function. We can graph it, and I'm going to do it in green, actually. It's just a straight line, of course. The line y equals x, right? This is a graph of g of x. Okay, so this is a graph of g of x equals to x. Now, the graph of f of x, we want to show it intersects the graph of g. If we can show that, then we have solved the problem, because the point where the graph intersects, so sort of imagine the graph of f, the point where it intersects, this is going to be a point which is on the line y equals x. So it's a point c comma c, but it's also a point on the graph of f, so it is c comma f of c. So therefore, it has to be a point c where f of c is equal to c. So we have converted the problem into showing the graphs of two continuous functions intersect. And why should you expect this to be true? Well, think about it in intuitively and visually. If you sort of have the graph, if it, it can't start at 0, right? Because if it starts at 0, that's going to be your solution. f of 0 is equal to 0. But if it starts up here, then there is no way for it to get to the other end without crossing the green line at some point. Even if it tries to avoid the green line for as much as you like, even if it tries to go like this, eventually it's, it's narrowed and funneled in there, and it has to have the property that f of 1 is equal to 1. And if not, then at some point it has to kind of cross the green line, and that's going to be a solution. In other words, the green line splits the box into two pieces. And to go from one half to the other, you have to cross the line, kind of like a moat or something, if you like. So how do we rigorously prove this? Now, here's the intuition I want to communicate to you. Whenever you have to solve a problem in calculus, where they ask you to show that two functions are equal at some point, or two graphs intersect at some point, always think intermediate value theorem. That is the silver bullet for solving all such problems. The intermediate value theorem guarantees intersections. It doesn't tell you where they are. You know, you can't solve an equation maybe, but you can know that there is a solution. So we're going to just briefly review the intermediate value theorem. It essentially says what, you know, a version of this, okay? Not quite this picture, but a version of this, and I'm going to write it here. So this is the intermediate value theorem. And it's important to be very precise. I'm trying to teach like precise mathematical thinking. So this is called IVT, the intermediate value theorem, that if f is a continuous function, if f from a, b to r, so it's a continuous real value function, okay, is continuous, um, and f of a is less than 0, is less than f of b, okay, so f of a is negative and f of b is positive, then f of c is equal to 0, for some c inside the interval a, b. OK, for some c inside a, b. And again, the picture you should think of here is that if you think about the graph, and this is a theorem, you know, I assume you're sort of familiar with it, but I'm being self-contained here just to give you an idea. If you have a and b, then somewhere here, your graph starts f of a is less than 0. And somewhere here, f of b is greater than 0. The only way you can connect the dots is you have to cross the x-axis. Right? That's, that's because the function is continuous. So you can draw the graph with a single stroke of the pen. So there has to be some c where f of c is equal to 0. Okay? Now, you may ask, this is, a func this is a property about saying something is 0. How do I then use it to show that two functions are equal? Right? Not just something is 0, but two functions are equal. This is a beautiful trick in math that you use right from middle school math, which is when you want to solve an equation, you put everything to one side and set it equal to 0. So when you want to solve f of c is equal to g of c, 
you can say it's saying that f of c minus g of c is equal to zero. So you can convert any problem about two things intersecting or two or something having a solution to something equaling zero. And the method is the following. So we're going to do it in this case. And you know, you can do the same trick in any other case. And I'll have videos on my channel. I've got a calculus playlist based on lectures at Princeton University. Okay, I've received a university-wide faculty teaching award there. And I, um, I will teach you calculus in the same style and content as I've taught there. And here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you the following. Um, so I'm going to prove that this theorem is a Brouwer fixed point theorem. So define a function, define h of x is equal to f of x minus x. Okay, we're taking the difference. We want to set, we want to find a solution to h of x equals zero. Notice that h is continuous. Okay, so we always have to verify the properties. H is continuous. Okay, you want to be very precise here just to train yourself to think rigorously. Math is about intuition and ideas. Okay, it's not really about rigor, but the rigor is necessary to set things up. It's kind of like a foundation. You know, you can't build a house without laying out the foundations. So h is continuous because it's a difference of two continuous functions. So that's, that's fine. Property two is that h of zero, well, what is h of zero going to be? Um, so you can actually, um, I'm going to actually just change h slightly just to make it fit exactly with IVT. Actually, it's the same idea, but we want to make h of zero negative and h of one positive, okay? Just to make it the same, but you can do it the other way too. Let's take x minus f of x. H of zero has to be less than or equal to zero because it's equal to zero minus f of zero, which is less than or equal to zero. Why? Because f of zero is at least zero. F of f is a function into the interval zero one. So all the values of f are going to be at least zero. So therefore negative f of zero is less than or equal to zero. And H of one is going to equal to one minus f of one, which again, because f is a function into the closed interval zero one, one minus f of one is non negative because f of one is less than or equal to one. So this is at least one, or at least zero, sorry, my, my mistake. So therefore, we have gone from a negative value to a positive value, and then we apply IVT. That implies that IVT, so therefore, I'm going to erase this. IVT implies that f of c is equal to c. So I'm just going to put it in two steps. h of c is equal to zero for some c inside the interval, for some c inside zero, one. And now that we know that, we can conclude that if h of c is 0 for some c in 0, 1, then therefore c minus f of c is 0, or in other words, c is f of c. So that is the theorem, that's the proof. So we've proved it using the IVT, the intermediate value theorem. An intermediate value theorem is a formal result that needs justification. Okay, it's intuitively obvious, but needs justification, but a powerful tool. Now, as I said, I'm just going to end by talking, trying to show you a glimpse of higher math. Okay, so that's going to be super fun. Just so you know, this is graduate level math. We have shown that a continuous function from 0, 1 to 0, 1 has a fixed point, okay? Now, one way of thinking about it before I mention this is imagine you have like a, a, a kind of like, I'm gonna, okay, I'm gonna actually say this first by showing you the picture in two dimensions and three dimensions, okay? What's going on there? So the two dimensional and three dimensional version of the Barrow fixed point theorem, which are a lot harder to prove, okay? It was an open problem that challenged people for a very long time and led to the development of the whole subject of algebraic topology, basically. So it's a very important statement. And it basically says that if you have a function, imagine, for example, in the plane, you have the unit disk. Okay, imagine the unit disk. So what this is, is all points at a distance less than or equal to one from the origin. Okay, this is a unit disk bounded by the unit circle. If you have a continuous function, we call this D. Okay, let's call this D2 to say it's two dimensional. If you have a continuous function F from D2 to D2, it's continuous then the Brouwer fixed point theorem tells you that f of c is equal to c for some c inside the disk. Okay, so that's what the Brouwer fixed point theorem says. And as I said, it's super hard. It, it's just a next level math, okay? You have to develop a new theory to solve this. And you can actually do in three dimensions if you have the earth, basically. So the surface of the earth is a sphere, everything within that sphere, okay? So it's like a ball. If you have a continuous function from a three-dimensional ball to itself, interior included, then it has to be, has to have a fixed point. And one way of saying this, which is super fun, is that if you take a bottle of water, imagine it's completely filled, okay, like a jug of water, and you shake it, some particle has to be unchanged after that. So the particles may move around, but at some, at any point in time, some particle will be in its place. Okay, it may have moved and come back at that point in time, but at that point in time, it has to be in its place. Super cool math. 
It's a Brown fixed point theorem, and it's a generalization of this. Okay, so just to show you a glimpse into higher math, thank you so much for watching. I love making this video. I love showing you intuition, teaching you the steps. Both intuition and rigor are important in math, and I'm trying to help support you in all angles, and I'm super happy that you've watched this far. It means a lot. I make videos on my channel for people like you who've watched this far. Don't forget to leave a like and subscribe, and I'm super grateful for your interest, time, support. I really enjoyed making this video, and I'm super excited to see you in the next video. Wish you all the best, and I'm going to see you soon.